Yes, once again, we're back with Mindset Pharma, and we're here with uh, James Lantier, the uh, CEO of Mindset Pharma, as well as uh, Joseph Arujo, who's the Chief Scientific Officer. It's great to meet you, uh, Joseph, and uh, welcome once again, James. How are you? How are you? Great, Dwayne. Thanks for having us. Oh, of course, of course, of course, always. Uh, so I wanted to uh, speak with you guys about some of the exciting news that you've had. You've had some excellent news over the last little while in terms of uh, developing uh, uh, your, your uh, psychedelic drugs here. So can you uh, just give us a bit of an idea of what's been going on, uh, Joseph? Absolutely. So, so thanks, thanks for having us on. And it's a real exciting time at Mindset. We've recently declared a, a lead from our family one candidates, uh, MSP 1014. We've, um, we, we, we've, the, the, the family one candidates really were pro drugs and deuterated compounds related to psilocybin. So something that we thought would be very psilocybin like when it got to the clinic. And in doing our animal experiments and comparing our drugs side by side, what we found is 1014 is much more effective at eliciting a, a response related to the serotonin 5-HT2A receptor in animal models, and also shows some improved safety profiles. So we're seeing less reduction in, in locomotor activity uh, with 1014. So, so we think that this compound when it gets to the clinic, we'll be able to achieve the same level of effectiveness as psilocybin, but using a much lower dose. And we think that that will also improve safety margins and, and make it usable by a larger patient population. The, the other advantage of, of 1014 is, is that in terms of a manufacturing process, uh, it should be simpler and easier to manufacture than psilocybin. We, we, we can omit the phosphorylation step, which, which has been, uh, which, which has been a, a challenge in, in a lot of uh, different manufacturing processes. Oh, excellent. So what would you say uh, the timeline would be in terms of developing um, uh, this drug as you move forward uh, to uh, preclinical and then clinical human trials? So, so the next steps will, will really involve two components, one being CMC manufacturing. So this will ensure that we develop a, a scalable, uh, multi-kilogram scalable process for manufacturing 1014 as a highly pure reproducible drug uh, uh, active pharmaceutical ingredient, which will then become a drug product. The second part will be running a, a series of prescripted studies that really evaluate the safety and toxicity potential of this drug to ensure that it'll be uh, safe when before going into man. So we, we anticipate that by uh, Q2 of 2022, uh, we should be uh, we should be relatively ready to 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 go into our first in man studies and, and to apply to the regulatory agencies for those studies. Oh, excellent! Can you also give us an idea of um, some of the stages that you're at with your other families of drugs as well in regard, whether it's in regards to DMT or psilocybin, and also. So you mentioned DMT, and and that's that's our most recent family. So, um, family four includes DMT and 5-methoxy DMT analogs. Once again, the goal with looking at those compounds is that they're much shorter acting, uh, but, but induce a, a hallucinogenic experience um, that, that really is, 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 is now being investigated for, for things like substance misuse and treatment resistant depression. And so th that affords the, the benefit of, of having a, a shorter in clinic visit potentially. So, so we, we thought of, um, we, we, we decided to, to capitalize on, on that aspect and apply some of the, the, the chemistry concepts that we uh, incorporated in families one and families two of our psilocybin drug classes to 5-methoxy uh, DMT and, uh, and DMT. And so we're, we're currently, um, we're, we're, we're excited. We, we're seeing a very different profile than psilocybin-like drugs when we look at receptor activity and, and binding. And so we see this as a, a potentially differentiated class, not only in terms of duration of action, but also potentially in terms of which uh, patient populations might have most benefit from this. And ultimately it'll provide 
um, it'll provide options for, for, for in-clinic uh, psychotherapy. James, I wanted to ask you as well. Um, so you're in the business here of producing next generational drugs. So just for the, our understanding, can you create a differentiation or just make it clear in our mind between next generational drugs and some of the compounds that were utilized by companies in the past? Absolutely. So, 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 I, you know, I think the factors that are really important to understand to get to to a more nuanced understanding of of psychedelics and 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 the companies that operate within them and and uh, and and where you know value can be created. I think it's important to realize that um, you know th this is not a new use of the drugs. So psychedelics. So so I think right. At, the, at right, 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 right now, you know, the, there's a tremendous. It's it's pretty clear that psychedelic drugs work really well for a whole bunch of different mental health afflictions. Um, but, but really, we're very much at at the early innings, I think, of, of the beginning of of this industry. Um, and what has been our viewpoint from from the beginning is that. These, these well-known drugs like psilocybin, uh, you know, LSD, DMT, MDMA, they're all great. They all, they all have great characteristics to them. Um, but that when people think about the, the, the big, exciting, you know, multi-billion dollar market opportunity of psychedelics, we think that what they're really thinking about or what they should be thinking about is the next generation of drugs. Because, and for a very simple fact or two simple facts, one is that the, uh, the well-known drugs um, haven't been optimized for use uh, by, by big population groups. So there's an opportunity to improve on them. But number two, uh, the well-known drugs are all in the public domain. So the groups today that even, you know, very well-known groups like Compass that are working with, um, uh, if they're working with things like psilocybin or formulations of psilocybin, it's very hard to get real competitive barriers around those drugs. So, so Mindset was really one of the first groups to start developing and filing IP patent applications on designs of second and third generation drugs. So we've gone from filing uh, and creating a whole library of, of patent protected new drugs now to really developing those drugs, proving out that they work in, in uh, in, in a lab setting, in some selected specialized animal testing. And, and I think Mindset really is very much a leader in this next generation, uh, with a wave of, of next generation drugs that I think you're gonna be hearing a lot more about in the next few years because they're better positioned to be able to, to help the biggest groups of people. And because it's the only way to actually commercialize in the psychedelic space is with a next generation drug. Right. So we're looking at next generation IP that's basically separating you from the pack in regards to having a viable product that can be commercialized, that can be patented, whereas other companies are sort of focusing on some of the old style uh, development of drugs here. Um, so in speaking about uh, just basically the uh, competitive landscape as well. What are your next steps over the next uh, six months in order to, um, you know, basically achieve your goals of uh, patenting some more IP and uh, developing more drugs? Well, well, we've got a really exciting next uh, next twelve months for Mindset because on the one hand we're going to keep growing the pipeline of new drugs. We've got more more new drugs uh, coming down coming coming out of the innovation machine. More patent filings. We'll be advancing the existing drugs that we have through these different um, preclinical steps to ultimately get them to to uh, to clinical stage, i.e., to human trials. Um, but I think you're going to start to see mindset begin to really, you know, make steps towards commercializing its uh, commercializing its inventions through, you know, potentially through through partnerships with other groups, potentially commercializing uh, our synthesis process. So, um, so I think we'll be we'll be making some great strides to take the new drugs forward to create new innovations that we'll be letting the market know about and uh, potentially to start commercializing some of what we built. We're really excited about Family 2, which is comprised of side chain restricted analogs of, of psilocybin and psilocin. And what we've seen in in vitro studies is that 
uh, on the serotonin 2A receptor, the effect size is much larger than psilocin or psilocybin. So we're, we're, we're talking about increases in efficacy of seven to eight times, potentially similar to LSD. And we're, we're seeing that in animal models as well, but also we're seeing some of these compounds having much shorter duration of uh, action in, in, in rats than, than let's say psilocybin or psilocin. So once again, this family could be third generation psilocybin compounds that are, that are much stronger, but shorter acting. And, and that will, will have some benefit in, in, the, in the in-clinic psychotherapeutic approach as well. And then lastly, our third family, uh, we, we've now characterized that in vitro and, and we found these compounds, once again, psilocybin-like, but much smaller effect size on the receptor with, with much longer duration of action. So we, we envision seeing these as take-home medicines that don't necessarily, uh, that aren't necessarily strong enough to elicit a, a hallucinogenic experience, uh, which is important for certain patient populations like juvenile ADHD and geriatric Alzheimer's disease, where you really don't necessarily want to impact activities of daily living, but ultimately provide some pro-cognitive and potentially neuroplasticity effects that, that will benefit them and, and that they have to take that on a regular basis. So that that's, takes advantage of some of the, 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 the neurochemical benefits of, of psilocybin without the hallucinogenic experience.